Because if there is no suffering, there is no happiness. If there is no left, there is no right. If there is no above, there will be no below. And that is the teaching of interbeing in Buddhism. This is because that is. The teaching of the Four Noble Truths should be understood in that, uh, in that uh, light. Suffering, ill being is a noble truth. You will ask the question, what is so noble about suffering? But uh, suffering, ill being is also as noble as the path. <laughs> the first noble truth is uh, you be dukkha. It is the mud, it is the garbage, it is the suffering. And you know that if suffering is there, something is there also at the same time. Like uh, the left and the right. If you confirm the existence of the left, you have to confirm the existence of the right. Because the left can never be without the right. If uh, politically you are on the left, don't wish for the right to disappear entirely. (laughs) Because if the right disappears entirely, you would disappear also. (laughs) That is the teaching of uh, interbeing. Sahabu. Koshin. Kohu. means uh, be. You are together. You cannot be by yourself alone. You have to interbe with all of us. If the right is not there, the left cannot be there either. So when God say, let the light be, the light said, my Lord, I shall have to wait. And God said, what do you have to wait for? I wait for the darkness so that we can manifest together. And God said, but the darkness is already there. And the light said, in that case, I am already there. <laughs> because the right and the left, they can only enter our, then they cannot be by themselves alone. The above and the below, the same. The subject and the object. The creator and the creator. Created. All pairs of opposites are like that. And that's why when the Buddha confirms the existence of, of your being, he confirms at the same time the existence of well-being. If well-being is not there, ill-being cannot be there either. And well-being is the third noble truth, and that is the cessation of ill-being.
Well-being means the cessation of ill-being. The same thing. It is like a light. Light is the absence of darkness. If darkness is not there, light should be there. And that is why when we confirm the truth of your being, we confirm naturally the existence of well being. The left and the right. Suffering cannot be by herself alone. Suffering has to interbe with uh, happiness. But there are a pair of opposites among many pairs of opposite, like birth and death, beginning, ending, being, non-being. And uh, later on in this retreat, we will learn how to transcend pairs of opposite in order to touch uh, the ultimate nirvana, our nature of no birth and no death and transcend all kinds of fears and discrimination. So confirming ill-being, you confirm at the same time well-being as something that is possible. And then if there is ill-being, there must be a way of life that leads to ill-being. A path leading to ill-being your way of life. You have lived in such a way that have made uh, your being possible. So looking into the first noble truth, you can see the second noble truth, which is uh, the making of your being. You don't have to look for for the second noble truth elsewhere. Just look into the first noble truth and you find the second. Suppose you have a depression. Your depression represents ill being. And if you look deeply into your depression, you find out where it has come from. You have lived in such a way in the last six months that it has made your depression possible. So looking in the first noble truth, we can say second noble truth. You have consumed in such a way that make uh, ill being possible. In Buddhism, we speak of uh, the making of ill being also as a path, the path leading to to ill being. The fourth, no, the fourth noble truth is also a path, but a path leading to well being. The path of well being. So the second noble truth is a kind of path also, the path of ill-being, the path leading to ill-being. And if uh, the noble path leading to ill-being begins with uh, right view, and the path leading to your being must begin with the opposite, wrong views. It's so simple. <laughs> it's, 
Easy enough. And this path of well-being, the path that uh, leads to well-being, is called the noble path. Because every step taken on that path generates well-being. The other path cannot be described as uh, a noble path. It is a noble truth, but it is not a noble path. And we, we can call it an ignoble path. <laughs> because each step made on that path generates ill being. Why each step made on this path generate well being? Well-being can be found in every step, in every breath. And ill-being also can be found in every step or every breath. Hell and paradise are both available in each step. But in, in the teaching of uh, Buddhism, the, the, the second Noble truth can be described as uh, not only a path but also a nutriment, food. You have consumed in such a way that made uh, you being possible. And the Buddha taught us about the four kinds of nutrients. And if you get the right kind of nutrients, we have well-being. And if we get the wrong nutrients, we get uh, ill-being. The Buddha said that uh, nothing can survive without food. Your depression is, is always there. If your depression is always there because you keep feeding it. If you know how to deprive your depression of food, she would die, have to die in a few weeks. And that is why the practice is to look deeply into the nature of your depression and find out what kind of food you have been using to feed it in terms of uh, sensory impressions, in terms of um, edible food, in terms of uh, volition, in terms of consciousness. There are four kinds of nutrients. Hopefully we have the time to learn about these uh, four nutrients. Because the way of uh, mindful consumption is the way out of this uh, difficult situation of mankind. So the Buddha said, nothing can survive without food. Your love, even if it is uh, the most beautiful kind of love, if you don't know how to feed your love, it will die in a few months or in a few years. In the beginning, your love can be very precious, very beautiful. You cannot survive without it. Uh, but if you don't know how to feed your love, and in, in six months, one year, your love will die and turn into something else. Hate, anger, a flower turned into a piece of garbage. So your love needs food to survive. Your suffering also, your depression also. If you keep suff suffering because you continue to feed your suffering, by your way of consumption. So the second noble truth and the fourth noble truth 
can be described as a path, but can be described at the same time as uh, nutriment. And the fourth um, of the five mindfulness tendons is about mindful consumption. If uh, we practice the fifth or uh, the fourth mm, mm, mindfulness trainings and and uh, every day, and then uh, we transform every day our suffering, and we cultivate every day our well-being. I think uh, today, later today, there will be a presentation of the five mindfulness trainings. And the fourth, uh, the fifth, the fifth, not the fourth, the fifth mindfulness training is about consumption. Mindful consumption will heal us and heal the world. And mindful consumption is the noble path leading us out of this uh, difficult situation of, of ours. Looking into the Four Noble Truths, we see that uh, looking that one truth contains the other three. Looking into the truth of ill being, you see the second truth, the making of ill being, the path leading to ill being, the way of consumption that leads to ill being. And if you see that uh, path, you see the same at the same time the other path. Because if uh, this path begins with wrong views and the other path begins with uh, right view. Because the noble path has uh, eight uh, elements beginning with right view. So the wrong path also has eight elements. Uh, after wrong view, there will be, there is wrong thinking instead of right thinking. And this is not philosophy, this is uh, the, uh, the art of living our daily life. So not only you looking into ill being, you see the second noble truth, the making of ill being, but you can see the path leading to well-being, and you can see also uh, the cessation of well-being, which means the existence, the presence of well-being. So one of the truths contains all the other truths. So that is the, the nature of interbeing of the four noble truths. And we have to understand the teaching in, term, in, in that light of interbeing. 